Now from congressional races to the race for Oregon governor. Let's take a look at where things stand right now in the hotly contested race with election day exactly three weeks from today. We're going back to the website 538.com to take a look at a couple of their models. This is the one that we showed you last week. We think it's valuable because it averages all the polls that have come out for the race so far, and it accounts for each poll's quality, how recent it is, sample size, and its partisan lean. And you can see it was last updated on October 13th, and it shows Christine Drazen with a three-point lead, again, according to an average of all the polls for this race since May. Kotak has seen growth, but still lags behind Drazen, and Betsy Johnson's support is heading in the wrong direction. And how about this forecast? 538's model simulates the election 40,000 times to see who wins the most often. They give a sample of 100 outcomes from those 40,000 to give you an idea of the range of scenarios the model thinks is possible. They're calling this race a toss-up, and you can see the model shows Drazen with a four-point lead, if you will, with many of the wins coming by a margin of less than 1%. I know this is deep in the weeds geek stuff, but I think it's fascinating. I hope you do too. It all goes to show you this thing is projected to be super duper tight on November 8th. And that means all of the candidates are gonna be doing whatever they can between now and then over the next 21 days, which means they'll be spending money on, yes, you guessed it, ads. Whether they're here on TV or mailers sent to your home, you should expect they are not going to let up anytime soon. So let's check in on the campaign finances for each candidate and see where they stand right now. And if any big donors are preparing the candidates for their final push. We'll start with cash on hand, meaning simply how much money do the campaigns have at their disposal right now. Republican Christine Drazen has just over $817,000. Democrat Tina Kotek sitting on quite a bit of money with more than $2.7 million ready to spend. And unaffiliated Betsy Johnson still has about $2 million to decide what she's going to do with. Now, get ready for a deep dive on each campaign to see if we can find any interesting trends with how the money is coming in or maybe going out recently. Let's start with Christine Drazen. Just yesterday, her campaign made its two largest expenditures yet, spending over $1 million each with two different strategy firms, meaning more ads are definitely on the way. That's not to mention smaller spends with other ad firms, but those were just a few thousand dollars here and there. And when we look at her largest campaign contributor, that falls to the Republican Governors Association. This month alone, they've donated $2.2 million to Drazen, and in total, they've shelled out $4.7 million over the course of her run to become Oregon's first Republican governor since 1987. Clearly, they think she has a shot because they're putting their money on the table. We can't forget the next largest contributor to her campaign, Nike co-founder Phil Knight, kicking in a million dollars just 12 days ago. It's also worth pointing out that Drazen's camp is certainly marketing the fact that they're confident that they can do it. And she's starting to talk as if she's already won. I don't know if you noticed, but we showed you a statement she gave us yesterday that included the phrase, I look forward to working with Mayor Wheeler and local leaders as our state's next governor. Oh, okay. Of course, a lot of candidates like to position themselves with statements like that, but it's harder to pull off when the polling is not on your side. And it is a slim margin, but right now, the polling is on Drazen's side. Now to Democrat Tina Kotek's campaign. It shows a similar story to Drazen, spend, spend, spend. On Friday, the campaign made its largest single expenditure to date, more than $1.3 million to a political consulting firm. And just a week before, they spent over $1.2 million with the same company. Meaning, yes, more ads are coming from the Kotek camp as well. And when it comes to the biggest contributor, that would be the Democratic Governors Association. They've given $1.75 million so far this month. And over the course of the campaign, they've chipped in $5.8 million in a bid to keep Oregon blue. And where Drazen had Phil Knight sending her a million dollars earlier this month, Kotek got a seven-figure donation from the Service Employees International Union on October 5th. It's worth noting that the SEIU is where President Biden made his first stop last Friday in Portland, where he met with Kotek during a grassroots event with Oregon Democrats. I'm sure that's just a coincidence. And that brings us to Betsy Johnson's campaign. And what we want to note here is that campaigns have several days to report expenditures and contributions, and Kotek and Drazen camps are mostly up to date. 
Johnson's data, not so much. It's only showing transactions from October 10th and before. So we'll dig into that information. We're going to use what's available. While the other campaigns are pouring the money into strategy firms, Betsy's last six-figure expenditure came October 3rd, and it was $115,000 to targeted platform media. Certainly not the two plus million that we've seen from the other candidates recently. The next biggest spend before that was $319,000 on September 28th and over $800,000 two days before that, also to targeted platform media. Betsy's biggest contributor is still Nike co-founder Phil Knight, who gave a total of $3.7 million between January and September before he hopped over the fence to support Christine Drazen earlier this month. It's worth noting that Johnson's campaign has not had a six-figure donation or an in-kind contribution so far in the month of October, according to these campaign records. Drazen has had six such donations this month and Kotech twice that amount with 12. By the way, in-kind contributions are donations of things like goods and services instead of cold, hard cash. So, what can we take away from all those numbers? Sometimes covering these campaigns is like covering a horse race and trying to tell you who's in the lead. One way to see that is to see who the folks on the sidelines are putting their money on. Right now, that's both Drazen and Kotech. Johnson still has a ton of money at her disposal, more than $2 million ready to spend, but the polls are showing her campaign is in dire straits. Perhaps they're not putting any stock in the polling, though, and they're waiting for a big campaign spend closer to Election Day. Time will tell, but the clock is ticking. Ballots are being mailed out in the next week or so. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this as well. We know that you're sick of the ads, but we hope you like these campaign deep dives to try and get a picture of what's happening and what's to come in a race as important as this one. It is significant. Send us an email. Let us know, will you? You can send it to thestory at kgw.com or call and leave us a voicemail, 503-226-5090. And don't forget about KGW's gubernatorial debate tomorrow. You can watch it live at 7 o'clock right here on Channel 8. The debate is sponsored by KGW and The Oregonian. We will have Christine Drazen, Tina Kotek, and Betsy Johnson all live in our studios all at the same time to answer your questions. It's the last debate before the election, so if you have not made up your mind on who to vote for, be sure to tune in. And you should.